The following game has been rated E10+, Plus, which is short for everyone aged 10 and up by the ESRB for fantasy violence and online interactions are not rated by the ESRB. So basically fantasy violence. Uh, that means anyone under the age of 10 should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations. I am Outlier and I bid you welcome to this channel. Joining me today is, of course, my usual co hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today we're returning back to Minecraft. Now, uh, we're building more than just a mine. Uh, that's simple. You dig a hole and start removing things. Well, you're building it because the mine's arguably the space that is left after you take stuff out. Technically, the mine is uh, a location where you actually do mining, which is the removal of some form of material out of the earth. Uh, for usage somewhere else. True, it's not exactly accurate, but without actually looking it up, that's my general understanding of uh, what a mine is and how it operates and, you know, all that fun stuff. But that's not important here. The premise of Minecraft isn't so much crafting mines as it is crafting whatever you want. I mean, you're basically thrown into an open world sandbox filled with three-dimensional cubes. True. And uh, then you basically harvest these cubes of various types of materials that you can find and use them to build whatever you want. There are a few other things you can do. You can go hunting various monsters. You can find various things to complete the actual uh, story quest line that Minecraft supposedly has. Well, I say supposedly because there's only like three real steps to it. You basically take out enough... Endermen to get enough ender eyes. Okay, fine, maybe four or five. Uh, then you, or ender pearls, whatever they drop, that's what you collect. And then you uh, forge a gateway to the nether, uh, collect blaze rods, I believe, to turn into blaze powder. You need enough of them for uh, however many ender pearls or ender droppings you have. No, I'm not collecting their poop. It's just what gets left by a monster once you kill it is known as a drop. Because it gets dropped. But anyway, uh, and then I believe you craft the Eye of the Ender uh, using the blaze powder which is made from the blaze rods and the drops from the Enderman. And after that, you then use some of the Eyes of the Ender to find the Ender Portal, which is usually buried deep below ground. Uh, once you get to said portal, you use your remaining Eyes of Enders to turn it on. And once it's on, you jump into the Ender Portal, fight what's known as the Ender Dragon, and if you kill it, you win. Okay, so about six steps. But anyway, while I've played Minecraft for... 
a significant amount of time and over a significant period of time, I've never once bothered to actually fight the Ender Dragon. And no, part of the reason isn't because when I started playing, the Ender Dragon didn't technically exist. Because yes, I've been playing for that long. Not constantly, no. It's more of a play for a while, stop for a couple months, pick it back up type deal, but still, it's been a while. But that's a moot point, given what I've been doing lately in this series of Minecraft videos, which is to essentially build, well, a city, for lack of a better term. Well, it's not just any city, and uh, we'll find out once uh, we get done the introduction. So therefore, this game is of course made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. So here we are in game. This is our normal starting point for lack of a better term as the rest of the world spawns in. Uh, behind me is the quarry, which is where I go to gather all the stone for the city that I've been building, or at least what will eventually become the city that I am building. I do also have a bunch of furnaces, which are cooking more uh, cobblestone into stone. And if you haven't seen uh, any of the prior episodes, basically what I've been doing is going to the quarry, gathering a whole bunch of cobblestone, taking the cobblestone to the furnaces, uh, cooking the cobblestone back into stone, then using, coming over here to this uh, crafting table and turning the stone to stone bricks. And occasionally, I have to go over here to my various, what I like to call tree mines, even though it's not really mining in the traditional sense, but I am harvesting wood in what feels like a mining method to gather more wood to fuel said furnaces and various other things I may need wood for, like uh, charcoal to make torches and whatnot, all to build that. No, not the cloud, the thing behind the cloud. No, not that cloud. I'm building that. Not the bamboo. That. It's Nimbus. City above the clouds. I call it that because it will eventually be a city and it is technically above the clouds. We've already had that argument before. So, I haven't really done much in between episodes. I keep thinking I'll come back and play this in between episodes, but I keep getting caught up playing pretty much everything else, and uh, don't really get back to it, other than like an hour or two before I'm about to film a new episode, which is technically what I've done. So, as I talk... Oops, hang on. So as I talk, I'm basically coming, uh, walked over here, and yes, this is the quarry, yes, it is unfinished. Uh, my various tree harvesting areas, some snowberries, which is technically my only farm available right now. Uh, the jungle trees haven't really spawned into a massive tree yet, and truth be told, I haven't really moved it recently, so that may be why. But, um, yeah, so this is pretty much all that I have at this point. Uh, this massive dirt tower is only temporary. Uh, once I complete, well, most of Nimbus City Above the Clouds, and yes, I do uh, plan on always referring to it as Nimbus City Above the Clouds, its full name, even though I may occasionally lapse and just simply call it Nimbus, but everything that's up here that's dirt that you can pretty much see is temporary, so I will eventually be taking it apart, uh, take longer if I accidentally fall off said dirt pile, uh, but uh, at one point, uh, once I get to a certain point, uh, none of this will be here. It'll just be stone, and I'll get up to it by using these water elevators, as I believe their uh, official 
designation is based off of what I've read in various Minecraft how-to books. Yes, I read how-to books. It's how I figured out a few of the more intricate things that I haven't always done. But they talked about water elevators, and that's where they call them that, so I'm assuming the rest of the community calls them as well. So my plan is to have a bunch of water elevators coming from uh, the ocean to Nimbus City Above the Clouds. And while I haven't really finished the actual base section of Nimbus, I still have uh, chunks of this wall left to do, and I think a few others. As well as the upper plate and then the upper portion of Nimbus. Uh, I've already done episodes doing all of that, so I figured rather than working on Nimbus per se directly, what I can do is, if I can get back out, is work on the under section of Nimbus, which doesn't technically have a name, um, which is basically going to be a lattice of, ele of uh, the endpoints for the water elevators and maybe a few extra things, as well as a... Uh, well, a land bridge directly connecting, reconnecting it to the land, so that way, once all the dirt is gone, I don't have to just simply swim out to, I guess I could call it the lattice, and uh, then take a water, water elevator up. So, that's the plan for today, and I did mark off using dirt up here where I want the remaining six water elevators to be. So, they'll basically be in a sequence ringing around the central part of Nimbus. About equal distance from each other. So, plan is, once I go to bed, because the sun has set. Basically hop up, hop over the dirt. Break out my shovel. Remove said dirt. Use a pickaxe. To move this block, and then chase after it. And to hop over here, and then take this water elevator back up, assuming I can manage to actually get up it. Now, I should technically finish the end point on the other one. I should do a lot of things. We'll see if I can get to it. I really want to focus on the lattice right now, because uh, I haven't done that yet, and it's shiny and new. It might make for an interesting video. So, if we don't get caught under Nimbus, city above the clouds, we exit that door. And then we take our bucket of lava, plop that right there, give it a second or two for it to create a line of lava going down. And eventually, rather than just instantly dissipating, it should eventually hit the ocean and uh, turn some of the ocean water into, well, stone, technically. And uh, once it does that, I'll have a nice little... Uh, bottom so well, building area to uh build the end portion of this uh water elevator for here and while i could technically build the water elevator above it well right now and i probably will or should or could eventually i'm just going to go and dig the next one so i basically have to do this five more times And I really gotta learn not to do that. And because I'm not turning the lava into something else, in fact, that's actually the lava uh, that I dropped last time heading straight down. Top up right there. Okay, and watch it just simply fall. Well, to be fair, I had expected a longer line of lava. I wasn't expecting just this little portion of it, so I want to see if it'll actually spread or if it just hits the uh, water. Nope, it hit the water. Okay.
I mean, technically, yes, it would be enough to build on, but uh, the other two actually had a larger area of, lo of uh, stone to work off of, and I want everything on the lattice to be marginally uniform. Okay, that could have ended badly. It's also part of the reason why I build over uh, water, in case I fall off and down. So we just put this lava right here. Wait a uh, quick minute for it to get a nice column of falling lava going. Before we go back and pick it back up. And we do that over here. Now, I don't think it uh, the extra stone block down underneath uh, this lava plume will actually uh, change how it works. I mean, if anything, it'll make it spread out larger. But as far as I know, lava only spreads three squares in any direction. Although technically, much like water, once it hits an elevation and it's enough to flow down, it then spreads an extra three squares. So... If you really want to spread the lava the maximum amount, uh, you got to do it in three dimensions. Well, no, water will spread up to about eight squares. So, I mean, they operate relatively somewhat the same, but still different. So that should be uh, plenty large enough plume of lava. So let's head over this way and basically build the other four. So let's eat our last uh, thing of mutton because we were down by two food units. Actually, grab that one. Cool. I just stick that right there for now. Of course, I forgot I should be doing the corners as well. Oh well. I can come back and do them. Of course, one thing that I do have to keep track of is make certain I don't accidentally fall into the lava as I'm putting it down or picking it back up. Because that would technically be bad. Alright, missed that one, so we gotta go diving after it. Alright, so in the meantime... Uh, that plume's coming down. That one's still technically growing, because I didn't pick up the lava block. And, uh, that one is... Well, landed and fanning out. As this is the one that we did the first time. And it doesn't look like it uh, did any bigger, so it's one, two, three, four, six. Yeah, so it's basically the central square and then out three. So that's what it did for all the others. Okay, cool. Then I'll make them all look like this and probably connect them with bridges, at least that's the plan. I right, so we'll just grab you. Stick you there thusly, and we head off to the other one to give that spout time to, well, grow. Alright, we grab that, so we should be good there. Let me put that there, so give that a minute to create its plume. That one did finally hit ground, but because I had to fall down somewhere else and uh, you know, had to leave it, so the plume is going to be quite large. That one looks like it's still falling. 
course, now if I fall down any one of these holes, uh, it'll probably kill the character because he wouldn't be falling into water. He'd be, well, hitting literal stone. Right out here and look at what's going on. Alright, so that one's done. That one's about to hit. And uh, that one's still going down. So this is what it'll look like. I don't know why it looks like that there's light coming from these things. Maybe they're still new and shiny. And uh, I actually have to mess with them before they start going dark again. Or they could just be on the edges and there's still lava pouring down. But, uh, you know, once that one forms, I can start building down there. Technically, as I said before, I could probably, well, should probably start building up here as well. It's like, what, five in? The outer edge, doors here. Walking off a bit. Water goes here. And then back section. Okay. Why do I not like that sound? So it doesn't look like anything spawned up here. Um, one of the issues with not sleeping in the squirrel hut is because this is actually wide and open and rather dark at nighttime. So things will actually spawn up here because I don't have everything lit yet. And since this is an open bed, I could technically be attacked while asleep. And that would be bad. Alright, so I have the pistons on uh, the sides for the corner areas, but for the cardinal directioned ones, leap over that, uh, my plan is to basically put it back here. Then stick a lever on it to open it up and close it, and it works like that. And then, water will, and then the water will end up going up top here. And it's what? Five? One, two, three. Yeah, about five squares tall. I think that's big enough. And I think the fourth side is complete stone. Old stone brick, technically. And then the fifth line is basically the upper plate. So I'll stick the water right there. Cover that up. Fall off and get slightly injured. I mean, technically, it's actually five up here, I think. Let me get a better look. I'm mean, gonna keep changing this every time, so. Yeah. Okay, um, so I wonder if the water is actually five blocks tall for these. 
Where is... There's my dart. No, it actually is four, at least for this one. Yep, four here as well. So I don't have to worry about the water. It's just the torches that are a little bit off. Of course, I didn't really pack extra torches. So. I should have, but I didn't. Really? Close the... Close the door. Alright, and they're fixed now. And this one has water coming out of it, right? Yep, it's got water coming out of it. Doesn't have a door yet, but much like these spare torches, I left them behind. But you know, all I gotta do is just run back, and by that I mean leap off into the water. I'm glad you don't really need all that deep water to, um, you know, not die from a fall that height. Of course, while I'm not exactly certain what the height translates into in real life, I'm fairly certain if you actually did make a jump that high. What was that? You probably would have been dead anyway, so. Fun stuff. Or not. Death is never fun. I mean, in certain scenarios, it can be fun-y-ish, sort of, if, you know, no one who's actually alive dies, but, no, true death is never fun. put my spare torches. Not entirely certain I actually had spare torches. I know I made an extra thing of charcoal to turn into torches. But I can always grab that. And I've always found because each stick and charcoal or uh, coal you use makes four torches. In terms of uh, storage, it's always less storage intensive to just haul around the ingredients, at least for the first two stacks of torches. Dude had a trident. I was not about to mess with him. Uh, don't think he dropped the trident, though. Which is, well, disappointing, because I can't make tridents, and I believe they have a few interesting mechanics to them. But since I can't make them, I can't get them unless I take out the drown. And, uh, Minecraft, for all of its wonder and splendor and various things you can do, it is not technically a fighting game. I mean, it is. You do fight various things, but it's not designed and geared towards that, specifically. And I did not pack any of the doors that I had planned. Of course, I also don't think I have any oak. I turned all the oak blocks that I have left into, um... The charcoal. So, there's that fun stuff. Alright, so I could probably go back out and just keep making new um, water elevator entry points, for lack of a better term. But you see one, you see them all. So, down we go. And 
And yeah, now that I poured water down here, this is actually dark, so... I don't know if the rocks are still technically considered uh, hot, so they're still producing a small amount of their own light, or it's just a uh, graphical issue. Well, for now. Uh, we'll stick that there so we can see. And I should probably uh, start on the one that has, actually has water still going down it. So if we come up here, and the sun is actually technically setting. Uh, grab the stone bricks that I have. What I need to do is find the center point. It should be... Here? Yeah, that looks like it. And then put stone bricks all the way around it. Without drowning. So get rid of this one, although it will take forever in a day. Because I'm underwater, and uh, mining underwater takes forever. Hopefully I don't get attacked, because that would just be annoying. Like so! Actually, no, I'm not being attacked. I <laughs> was not paying attention to my oxygen, and I started suffocating. So, let's actually... Head back to the squirrel hut, uh, because I'm fairly certain by the time I get back up to Nimbus City above the clouds, it's going to be dark, and it'll be dark long enough for things to actually spawn, so... And there we go. I'm always worried that while I'm trying to get my dirt blocks after getting into the squirrel hut, something will ch uh, be chasing me down into here, and then I have to fight them off in close quarters. Alright, well, I guess that's one way to kill a skeleton. Don't think I have much in the way of food left. I mean, I got 39 snowberries, but, um, inventory is kind of full. Those are bones. You know, one of these days I will remember not to try to eat snowberries while pointed at the ground because that plants them. Because unlike things like beetroot and, um, well, you can't really eat wheat, but carrots and potatoes, uh, I think they have to go in tilled soil, whereas snowberries can just, well, go as is. Of course, snowberries really don't feed you up all that much, but uh, it's better than technically nothing. No, oh, almost forgot to grab more water. And it's raining now. At some point it turns to snow. I don't know if it's a biome thing or just ridiculously, ridiculously uh, high thing, but 
It's raining here, so I'm assuming it classifies that section as a different biome. So I'm assuming that. So I'll stick you there. And uh, we head back down. Actually, no, the main reason why I wanted to go up is because I didn't pack any stone brick stairs. And I was coming up here to actually build them. Might as well put torches around this thing too. Alright, so we should be good there. And once again, I did not remember to build the stone stairs, or at least this time, I remembered before heading back down the elevator. Uh, so I will need some stone brick walls as well. Like a stack of those, and uh, you know what, a stack of those. there just to get extra space. Well, the rain does kind of make it hard to gauge when it exactly it is at night time. also doesn't help that for a quite a while uh, it only rained once it hit night time so it was kind of an indicator that it's now night so So what we now have to do is mine out the central block. I do have some dirt, right? Yes, I do. So start sinking. There we go. Block this all off so I don't have to worry about the water. Mine down one square. Remove the dirt. Mine the stone around here. I mean, one variant of construction that I was thinking of was actually rather than having this be uh, stone stairs, just basically have the walls go off to the edges. I see that drown there. I like how llamas are just spawning in the middle of nowhere. I don't even know why they do that. Probably because I'm close proximity to me. Okay, so it's stone bricks all around. One, two, three, four high? Yeah, four high. Okay. Of course, that square is still there. And it'll be four. Okay then. We.
Let me put torches all around. Yeah, I hit the corners. And then on the inside, because mobs like spawning wherever they can get. Alright, so this uh, receiving part of this water elevator is technically done. Uh, arguably, what I should also do is to put in a door, or at least turn this off so that way nothing can swim into here. And it looks like it's nighttime again. And then all the way back up and actually get into Nimbus City above the clouds. But I'm currently playing in single player only, and I don't think the AI controlled mobs are smart enough to actually do that, so I should be fine. Plus, I don't think the um, game actually has them spawn this close in or that far away. Right, and hopefully nothing spawns while I'm sleeping here. If not, I'm about to get a rude awakening. And, uh, that didn't happen. Okay. And because I slept overnight... Oh, crap. Something did spawn. Several things, actually. Anybody else? Okay, good. Well, that was actually kind of annoying, but uh, the pillar is still around, although the bed was removed. It took a chunk out of this thing. I think I actually lost the lever. No, picked it up still. So it's there. Okay. Of course, that means that the wa since the water started flowing, I lost the torch that's down there. Who knows where that is? I would say I probably shouldn't have the uh, spawn point right there, but... It's the closest bed, and the bed got removed, because of, I'm assuming, the creeper. And, uh, since that's technically my registered spawn point, if I had been taken out, for one reason or another, uh, it wouldn't be a case that I would just simply go to, uh, the squirrel hut. I would end up back at the initial spawn point, uh, some ways off in that direction, I believe. I'm going to have to find my way back here. Alright, something tells me I'm not finding the torch that was here. That's a drowned, I see you. I know you're there. Step into the light so we can have a nice chat with my sword. Oh, there's the torch. Man, that got spread far away. I still see you. No, that's just a drop. Huh. It must have gone away. Okay. I now to do the hard part of underwater construction, and that's removal. Of 
course, I guess the good thing is that the uh, because it's underwater, the drop doesn't fall all the way down to the ground. At least to the seabed. Alright, so... This one's arguably done, so... Still needs a door. Well, I should technically do this on the other one. This one's the closest to complete. I would like it to be well finished. Technically. And I guess I could technically put upside down stairs on the bottom of these. Uh... For, like, aesthetic purposes, but truth be told... I mean, I may... But if I'm being honest with myself, unlike the uh, sides of Nimbus City Above the Clouds, I don't actually expect anybody to be under the water elevator sections. So I don't see much point uh, to that. So then once the fences are in, torches go on. And I like having a torch every other on the uh, fence. So, this is in the wrong spot. There we go. So, the top will look like. Top will look like this. So, that way, anybody going up the water elevator can just simply pop up here and uh, use this as a slight defensive point or just to hang out up here. And, uh, you know, they won't accidentally fall off. And then we basically do the exact same thing uh, over here. Alright, then we're good. So all I need is a door and then this one will be done. So if we go to the one in between these two. You get up because I need the stone bricks again. And I need the center point, which I think is right there. Yep. I'll keep the torch just so that way I have some light to arguably see. Alright, I guess it would be helpful if I didn't put them upside down. What did I say about putting the stairs upside down? No, I did not say that about putting the stairs upside down. Alright, and uh, that should be the third one complete, minus, of course, the door. And sun is setting, so... I set a torch right next to the bed. And something once again spawned up here. Several something spawned. I really gotta put in lights. Of course, I could. What I could technically do is just build something around the bed itself. And there's a creeper up here. I see you right there. 
Okay, so let's test out this water elevator. Hopefully it'll be far enough away so that way the creeper will despawn. So we just turn it on and head straight down. This up, this is down. I think a spider spawned on that. Something spawned on that. Yep, straight down and uh, we're good. Cool. And if heading straight down was enough to despawn the creeper that's up there, let's head all the way back to the quarry where I should hopefully have some oak blocks. Uh, well, yeah, stuff to make oak doors, at the very least, spare doors. And that's not the place where I keep the wood. This is the place where I keep the wood, and... Yeah. Yeah, I think I actually used all the uh, oak blocks to... I have two spare doors, so... I used all the oak logs to make... Um... I have three oak logs. Okay. Still, doesn't have to be much, just has to be enough, so... Make the oak logs and uh, turn them into doors. And now I have eight doors, so it should be uh, enough for the least near uh, for, uh, needs, current needs, whatever the exact term is. Let's put one there. Put one there. I'm right here, head up this one. And I actually want to recess the doors in here, so I have to put it well, in the water elevator. So, works like that. Good there. And then we head back down. Alright. Okay, now I can build the other five remaining water elevators, but it's pretty much going to be the exact, uh, you know, maybe the light from these things is generated because it's technically still, uh, there's like a hole up to the sky. So maybe that's why those things are still lit. doesn't really matter, eventually we'll get covered and I'll have to put torches in, so. But for now, they're just effectively placeholders. In the meantime, I could build the, uh, the other five, but as I was saying, it's basically more of the same. And so in the meantime, what I, sh what I will do is work slightly on the uh, lattice a little bit, and by connecting the three water elevators that I have made. Just so that way I don't have to swim between each one. Well, my plan is to basically have it equal uh, this distance, which is what, one, two, three, four, Seven? Okay, maybe not seven, but... At the very least, I was going to make it five in length. Yeah, this works. Yeah, so the main bridge will be about five in... Well, the main pathway will be about five in, uh, squares across. So that way the edges can be uh, fencing. I can have torches on those fences so people can't accidentally walk off. Well, they're going to be this wide because even if I am playing by myself and don't really ever expect people to actually, you know, cohabit this entire city, it's still technically a city. I mean, it's literally named Nimbus City Above the Clouds. City is part of the name. So, 
at the very least, I have to at least pretend that there's going to be plenty of people here, and I need the walkways wide enough to account for, well, a large amount of foot traffic at the very least. I was going to need more stone bricks, however... Let's take it out at three apiece. So that's what, edge and then three? No, it's edge and then two. Yeah. Of course, because I'm removing stone blocks, that means that there is no longer water there, so... No, uh, it's flags that as being empty, so the water is trying to fill it. Now, normally the water would uh, fill it itself, however, the water will only actually do that, at least from what I've seen, is if it's one block square and there's uh, two water blocks right next to each other. And by one block square, I mean one block deep. So if I were to, say, put my water block here. No, that actually worked. I'm surprised. They must have changed that between, well, at some point. Possibly when they switched over to new Minecraft. But I believe I'm technically now out of stone blocks. Well, stone brick blocks, I should say. But one of the last things I did before I started filming was to put another uh, load of stone, uh, well, cobblestone into the furnaces to cook. So I should have eight more units of stone, which can turn into eight more stacks of stone bricks. Which I can then probably turn some into fencing because I'm low on fencing and I want a pile of fencing. So we'll stick this cobblestone in here just simply because I have some. And I don't actually have enough space, so... I probably don't need this much in the way of spruce uh, wood planks. So I'll put them away. Same with these. So that's two. Yeah, I got enough now. And the sun is setting again, so I mean sun does that. So we since we're now at the quarry, we head to the squirrel hut where things are slightly more secured. Only just though. There. And put one here as well. Actually, two here as well. Alright, so... Put the fencing in here. Alright, so these are actually even. So... Alright, now I have a decently large enough walkway and around the back I'll probably uh, increase the size along the back here to account for a two space plus no why don't I just build it Same on this side. Well, one thing I am going to have to do, which I actually forgot on the other side, was to uh, leave a wide enough space for the next bridge. So what I technically should do is...
move these. Stick you there just to make the water. And grab you to refill the thing. And I don't know why I did that because that block is actually going back. So then I can build a bridge out to the centerpiece and then the one past that and you know, so forth and so out. Branch it out as a kind of uh, lattice type construction. Hence why I'm calling this the portion of that I'm building uh, underneath Nimbus City Above the Clouds, the Lattice. Yes, I know, I'm not very original in terms of naming sometimes. But basically, I then just continue on and do, well, basically what I did over here. I should put in fencing on this side. But, uh, once I get done this. Basically what I did over there, I do over here. Okay, so it's square out here. I need to build that out and this side out. That's not helpful. Alright, and I'm now technically out of fencing. But I have a crafting table up in Nimbus City above the clouds, so all i got to do is just, well, take the elevator up. And then build more. Of course, the one problem is uh, I go too far to, you know, make certain I don't drown while taking the elevator up or down. I could actually walk off the elevator and I'll technically fall to the character's death now. Something seems off, other than the fact that the moon's rising. I would think that the back torches would basically mimic the path of the front torches, but they don't for some strange reason. Once uh, the next day hits, I'll explain what I mean in detail. that I mean once the new day hits and I make certain there is a creeper over there okay so let's go out the fun way as the same regards the torches they don't look like that they match up one to one I mean they do here but now, over here, they don't seem to be, because you know, I'm going every other, so it's basically no torch, torch, no torch, torch, no torch, torch. But on this side, it's no torch, torch, no torch, torch, no torch, torch, no torch. And so, there's still three squares here that are open on each side, but for some reason, uh, the fencing ends with a torch here, but not here. I mean, I made it two squares a piece all around.
but for some reason, you know, the torches don't match up fully. I don't know why, it's just bothering me for some reason. I mean, everywhere else they're even. Like, torch, 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 torch. So forth and so on. And they should basically be a mimic of each other, but for some reason they're not. Uh, maybe it's the fact that uh, these ends are in such a way. So it's like this, it's even here, so this is a torch which throws off this count. And they are the same size. They are the same length, I think. Two squares around, two squares around, so they should be the same dimensions. For some reason, the torches don't add up, and they probably won't match up until I get completely done the lattice, and uh, then it'll all make sense. But until then, you know, it's just going to irk me. Of course, now the question I should be asking myself is for the corner sections of the lattice, do I want them to go anywhere or do I just want to put in uh, two squares of a walkway and then fencing and just basically uh, cap off the fencing here? Okay, what was that? A lot of weird noises that I'm hearing. Made a line for the fences. I need to actually put in the fences. My question is, should I have like a small little bridge coming from here all the way out to there? I mean, part of me wants to say no, just simply because, you know, the more entrance and exit points I have, the harder it will be to defend. Yes, I do take defenses into account with this thing. So... I mean, this needs to be open for the next bridge to that one. I mean, they do uh, match up, although I do kind of prefer them on the corners, but that would mean I'd have to move every torch to keep them in line, and it's not worth it for that. So this will end up, eventually end up being a bridge to that one, and then it'll be a bridge to that one, and then so forth and so on. And this will be the main entrance way. I guess I could technically make it a little bit wider because it is the main entrance way, but still. I just hop back up here for some more fencing. Hop back down because why not? I mean, doesn't actually want to know how close I came to hitting the ground.
Okay, so that's the fencing done on this side. So all I gotta do is build five more elevators uh, to account for the remaining holes in the uh, oh, the base plate, the lower plate, I should say, of Nimbus City Above the Clouds. Build bridges out to those, probably connect the cardinal direction ones to, at the very least, the centerpiece over there. Probably do something strange and interesting and fun with the centerpiece, and the moon's out, so I should probably head back to the squirrel hut. It's probably too late for that. Yes, I hear that spider behind me. Alright, so as I was saying before uh, Knight uh, interrupted me, is build uh, the remaining five water elevators onto here, both uh, for both ends. Uh, build bridges and of the lattice all the way to the other five spots, and then the cardinal direction ones at the very least. Connect to the centerpiece where I'll do something with the centerpiece, because you know, it's there and why not. And then after that, all I have left to do is, if I head back up here... As I was saying, build the other water elevators up here, and then I need just need to finish the stair walls for the lower section of Nimbus City above the clouds. And uh, then I have to put in lighting so that way things don't spawn down here. And uh, build the upper plate, which is representative of you know, this stone line right here. And once that's done, and I also have a means of getting up to the upper plate, which will probably be, be built right on top of the keystone in the middle, probably so much of the uh, stair uh, columns that I have in the quarry. But uh, once all that's done, and I finish the upper plate and the edges of the upper plate, probably put in the dirt, then the real fun begins, because then the basic shape of Nimbus City above the clouds will be done, and then I can actually build all the fun stuff that I want to build, like farms and actual housing and probably a small factory. You know, and I can also, I'm also not technically limited to just the central point of Nimbus City above the clouds, this whole thing right here. I could technically build other pontoons, as I'm thinking of calling them, out, which, are similar, which share similar properties to Nimbus City above the clouds. And, but I can make them of other materials to keep them uniform, and um, you know, have other various things and specialties. Probably not going to make them the same size as the central section of Nimbus, City Above the Clouds, but I'll certainly uh, make them well large enough to accommodate what I need, and uh, then I'll actually have a definitive actual physical city, which should be fun. But uh, all of that's going to be another issue for another day, because I am going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague, and um, have a good day.